coming to you from the solar shed. I'm actually going to install a switch inside of my little refrigerator here and uh, I'm going to show it to you right now while I go through the process. I need to drill a bigger hole. Actually going to install my switch as well as uh, fuse. Let me get this bit first. Just stand me by hand first. I don't really have to have a, free, a, a switch on this refrigerator, but I just want to be able to turn it off if I need to because I'm actually connecting it to a 12 volt DC source, which is going to be my solar system. So just stand me by hand. It doesn't have to be real tight. Just a little snug. So here we go. This is going to be where the switch connection takes place. And all the switch is going to do is just going to break the circuit, the input voltage coming in from the battery or solar system. So here's the positive side of this input. I think I need to push it up some more, a little bit short here. need to adjust it. I actually have my son helping me right now, Nathaniel. Doing a good job with the cameras. But before I do that, let me also kind of confuse an inline fuse to this as well, just in case something goes wrong. It's always good to have a fuse. This fuse um, is a 30 amp um, fuse capability, but um, I'm just going to put maybe an, an 8 amp fuse in it. This refrigerator, when it was on, when it was AC powered, as you can look at the um, the current, the amp, takes about 1.6 amps, so maybe a 3 amp fuse will work for this one. But I love to have fuses guys, it's just a good practice to use fuses in your application. And also I love my wire nuts as well, it makes wiring a lot easier, especially in these places. Instead of soldering, you can just put on your wiring nut, wiring nut. Alright, this is the first pole of the switch. And then the other side would actually go here. Need to get one more wire nut. So you can see what's going on there. Connections looking good so far. Here goes. Where, where, where did my wire nuts go? Uh, here they are.
So you always connect your switch to the to the positive pole of the wire. It do work on the negative side as well, but it's just a good practice to connect the switch to the positive side. So this is the other side of the switch. This is going to be um, the output. Just think about the switch as just uh, like a water tap or a line. And what the switch basically does is just going to cut, cut the line, which means it breaks a circuit. This is for Nathaniel, because he's also learning about this thing as well. So, let me go in and reconnect these guys here. This is the positive side coming in. Make sure the switch works. It's not going to work right now because the circuit is broken. I don't have a, a fuse in here right now to close the circuit. Let's disconnect them. Actually, I actually have some quite a few holes in my fingers from these wires, but it's part of the process, right? It's part of the fun of it. You do get a couple holes in your fingers sometimes, but it's okay. Just the way it goes. It makes you look as if you're doing something, so. So work well done when you're done with it. You earn it, you earn it. All right, so now I'm gonna try and find a fuse. I have a couple of fuses in here. Let's see what I got. Um, 30 amp, 10. I really need like a three amp fuse, but hey. Just for testing purposes, I'm going to go ahead and put that 5 up. Actually, I have a 5 on fuse in here. I'm going to go ahead and use that one and see what happens. Here we go. Here is action. Here is action, guys. Let me get it pushed in real well. I think I may have blown my fuse already. Let's see what the resistance is on this fuse, if it if I actually have a reading. Okay, my voltmeter. Check to see what, I, what reading I have. I think I may have blown this fuse, amazing. It just, one point, this fuse is rated for five amps, but with about 1.6, Amps current draw. The fuse looks like it's going already. Well, let's let's check. Let's see what we have here. So got the voltmeter. Focus on the voltmeter. Yep, I did blow this fuse. Amazing. Actually, I'm putting more amps than look than it appears. Let me. Let me try this 15 amp fuse and see what happens there. It's done, guys. I need to go back and check to make sure I'm actually pulling what the current is on this thing. But get this fuse pushed in real well. All right. So if I try my switch, focus on the switch, Nathaniel. There we go. We break the circuit. So if I turn the switch on, the my refrigerator is on, let's turn it off, then the fans have stopped. So, yep, the switch is actually working in the circuit very well. Hope this helps you guys and um, this shows you how you can actually run your thermoelectric Black & Decker fridge off DC. And in my case, I'm going to, I'm going to run it off my solar system. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a nice day. This is Anthony. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and rate. Thank you.